Well, and thanks for joining me here in my shop today. Hey, that's a pile of radio there on my bench. So the first thing I want to do is uh, put the parts together. Speaker, push buttons, antenna, and the chassis. Get them plugged together and get it all working on my bench, similar to how it was working when it was still in the cabinet. Uh, I certainly want to do that before I do anything more with this uh, with this radio. I want to make sure it's working again on my bench just like it was. So, uh, and also we're going to take a closer look at these component parts here. Maybe we'll start, start right there with the, with the antenna. Couldn't see it very well when it was inside the uh, cabinet. So here we go. Let's take a look at it. Oh. So one corner is kind of smashed up in it here. Uh, doesn't look like any real damage has happened. So this is supposed to be a, a rotating antenna. It's supposed to rotate like this inside the cabinet. And I mentioned before the speaker had been put in with the uh, the uh, output transformer that's mounted on it the wrong the wrong way. So it was over here, and, and this thing is banged into it. I'm not sure if that's what caused this damage or not. And uh, when it was inside the cabinet and I tried to rotate it, it wouldn't rotate at all. Uh, it's pinned at the bottom here. A bracket I've see the bracket is screwed in. I've left it in the radio. There's a bracket that sits here, which just clumsily rotates in a hole, and then up here there should be a spring and a washer and a couple other parts at the top here. And this down here should have washers in it. All that stuff was missing. All, all the hardware parts are missing. So consequently this is just kind of jammed up in the, in the cabinet and it's just no way it's going to rotate. Uh, this is sort, sort of thing, I mean, the problem here that this is trying to solve is the problem of bringing home a really nice radio with a nice antenna like this in it, setting it in the room exactly where you want it, which just unfortunately results in this antenna aimed totally wrong for the station you want. You turn on your nice new radio and the station you want to hear you can't hear because the antenna is in the wrong position. So what are you going to do? You're going to move the cabinet around, put it in another spot, and, and this is a basic problem. You want the radio in a certain spot in your room, of course, but when it's there, it doesn't work well. So in comes this directional rotational antenna. So you put the radio where you want it. You tune in the signal you like, the one you're going to listen to 90% of the time, and then you rotate this until you get maximum signal. Then you just leave it. You, you never go back to it. There's, the only way to get at this is to get at the back of the radio, and that's a hassle. So it's kind of a one-time adjustment. That's how I believe this was really intended to work. Sort of to compensate for the angle of the cabinet relative to the station you want to listen to. So, uh, here's this a lot more interesting on this side. General Electric Beamoscope designed for better reception. And here's the big selling point. No aerial, no ground. So aerial is a hint that you're talking about a wire in the air. Uh, maybe out your backyard. That's a hassle. No ground. That's a hassle getting a ground wire. It's a hassle uh, uh, It's a hassle today for, for crying out loud. So this is a major seller for this radio. Hey honey, we don't need to hang a wire out our backyard. Your clothesline can be used for clothes again. So what about the condition of this thing generally? Um, well, so it's had some wires what has it had done here? Something going on here. So here we see, this, these are the original wires. Still a little bit of flexibility in them. Usually these go stiff. I can tell these are the originals because they disappear right through these holes. You cannot open this, you cannot open this antenna without getting through all kinds of rivets. And, and that hasn't happened, obviously. So this is the original wire. At this point, the, the insulation has cracked off the original wire. There's some bare leads, like they're virtually in contact here. They might even be shorting out. Some tape, and then this arrangement here. So this also feels... This looks... A you know what? This is a replacement. This is a replacement antenna. And now I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if this is really the case, but I was contacted a couple years ago by somebody who had 
was trying to fix up a KL-66 and they'd acquired another radio similar to it and then we're going to botch the two together and come out with a KL-66. What are the chances that that fellow who contacted me eventually sold his fixed up KL-66 to my guy? And here it is. I think there's a good chance of that. Even if it wasn't that guy. And that story is not really true. Looks like somebody else may have done the same thing. Is there any hint as to what radio this came from? Did I even finish why I think this? focus is on. I don't know if it's going to focus well into this. So there, there's there's definitely a lead wire coming down here. What's, what's this little tail here? I don't feel like there's any copper in it. There's no copper in it. Well, we'll make that an observation. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There has to be, here's one wire, one lead wire from this coil. There must be another one. There must be another one in here somewhere. We must be able to spot a second wire going in. There, there it is. There it is. There's two of them right here. Well, that's another bad sign. So normally these loop antennas are actually two loops. There's a, I don't know how they did this, so I, I, sh I shouldn't say too much. Maybe we'll look on the schematic, we'll, we'll find out. But it could be that there's two loops of wire in here. One of them is the pickup coil, usually one, maybe two turns, that's hooked up to the radio itself. And the other one is a free coil with a capacitor against it. Capacitor against it. And that coil is tuned to be resonant. Uh, in this case, it would be in the AM band. And uh, the result is the outside coil rings very easily with AM radio signals, and that ringing provides the energy to drive the pickup coil that's hooked up to the radio. So then we should see four wires, maybe three, but four wires. So the two of them are down here. One of them is up where we saw it, and the number, the number four, you know, you kind of expect one wire on the outside and one wire on the inside. You wouldn't expect them both to come from the outside unless they're the pickup coil. Unless, uh, yeah, don't know how this is working, but is something suspicious going on here? Hey, less suspicious. There's three wires going back to the radio. Three wires. Why, why, why is that less suspicious? You know what? I can't even tell you why there's three at the point at this moment. Yeah, we'll study the schematic and figure this out, but there's a chance this antenna is in trouble. Okay, set them aside. Beam a scope. Now, the other manufacturers had similar, very similar antennas, and they called them different names like wave magnet. They all had their own name for them. I guess it was an area that didn't get uh, balled up in patents. Or maybe it is an area that got balled up in patents, and that's why we're seeing all this these what amount to pretty straightforward antennas uh, hyped up for sales purposes. You just hear the sales department looking at looking at the first model of this antenna and going, okay I see the coil of wire but can we put it in some kind of package that looks like there's something inside something special inside. There's only a coil of wire here, but something special. Can we make it look that way and sell it? <laughs> Do you think there's anything special in here? You know what? We're going to get a look. I, I got a camera. I think I can look up in here. I'll do that later. I think I can see up in there. Okay, we checked the power cord already. Found it to be questionable, but okay. Now, the 
wire, a wire, a wire for the speaker. Let's take a closer look at it here. So again, someone has extended it. They've, they've either cut out a bad section. Wow, that, it, it, maybe it was only that long. <clears throat> I think it was probably longer. They probably cut a section out and then put in this ordinary lamp cord. <clears throat> Okay, so it's taped with the uh, stretchy plastic tape and that gives you an idea of the date that this was done and this kind of lamp cord, you know, it's been around a long time, but you bet too. This was probably done in the 70s, that would be my guess. So we got a couple things here that are suggesting this radio was fixed up in the 70s and that's the, uh, the kind of parts that were put inside. To me, date from, you know, and I'm just guessing middle to late 70s. Uh, let's just take a, a boo in there just for a second because yesterday when I was looking it over I, I commented about well, why would somebody bend these wires like this? Why would they do this? I did it here, I did it on a couple other capacitors. <clears throat> and I think the answer is they're trying to turn them into radial capacitors so uh, to make them look or <clears throat> fit just like a radial one with the uh, leads coming out the ends instead of coming out the bottom here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's what he was doing. He or she. Okay, well, let's carry on with the next thing to look at, which would be the set of push buttons here. So I'm just looking them over, uh, just to see if there's anything obvious about them. One of the things about these radios is they have a phono plug right up here on the push button structure. And you can't even see this uh, when you look in the back of the radio. You get right down your hands and knees and look up. It's hard to spot this thing. It's hard to reach it. Probably a lot of people don't even know it's in there. So I'm listening to it and feeling it. It's, it's completely consistent. It has that kind of white, kind of uh, green insulation that that just gets so stiff, for sure. Yeah, these wires are rock solid. That's okay though. You can certainly tell the this is the bottom side because it's all clean, whereas the top side's been collecting a little bit of dust. This is high up in the radio, so it didn't, didn't get too much dust on it. See the individual coils, the tuning to move the slug in the coils. And I believe this is for peaking. The uh, Once you get it tuned to where you want it, you then adjust this to, to peak the signal. These are the three connecting terminals for the three wires that are back in the radio. That's not a wire. It is. They stripped back the outer cover here and then used it as a little piece of rope to tie this on. There's the wires. So everything looks fine here. Um, sometimes these are a little too dirty to work well. And the number on it right there. 104195-2. Okay, there's a stamp there that says okay. So it's okay. It's brown all up in here. Maybe that, maybe you can see that a little bit. But it's in the cabinet. Okay, no problem on the push buttons. <clears throat> Last thing is a good look at the speaker. Uh, I'm going to take this right off my bench here. So we can put the speaker there. Come on, boys. Okay. The speaker. So I see the mounts are in various states of uh, badness. Now, this looks original. 
this green part here. Ooh. Stiff as can be. So what is this? So this looks like a piece of literally garden hose that somebody has cut into a poorly shaped washer. It's really it's not done very well. Then they put it here in a sad attempt to rubber up the mounts here. The original rubber, you can see it here, right? Oh, that's still really soft. So what you see is an internal sleeve. Let me push it out. Okay, so here's the, the sleeve that goes inside. And this is to ensure you don't over tighten this. The screw comes up from the back and the speaker is pulled into the cabinet until these uh, metal rings strike. Now you gotta wonder what, what's this rubber for then? How does this rubber help out the situation? Well I guess it, we can look closer at how this is actually mounted into the... No, no I'm gonna lose that little ring. So th these were cut to try to in increase the uh, diameter here and keep the metal sleeve where's my finger my finger's not on camera keep the uh, metal sleeve from from contacting i think that's what they were trying to do here this one's really fit on there Kind of fused in with the original mount. Here, I can take the whole thing out. Wow! So the garden, ho you know, garden hoses are stiff to begin with. If that's what this is, Ugh, it's just it's fused into one thing. Well, I've got new grommets and all kinds of stuff here to fix this up properly. So I'm not going to worry too much about what it is. It's more about what it's going to be. Yeah, these are all shot here. Okay, so now I think I know how this is supposed to work. So, yeah, it's not like I haven't seen this, you know, 50 times. So when this piece slides in, it runs into the, the rubber piece here or the whatever this material is and that that's where the cushioning occurs and then to try to keep you from over squeezing it it has that sleeve inside oh, I've got replacements for all this stuff here I should, should be able to do a good job on that so what's the big deal about mounting the uh, speakers well the big deal is that the speaker is not mounted securely see this isn't right this this is supposed to be through the hole so halves above and halves below so there there's a history to this speaker of some sort maybe somebody I don't know I don't know what they did but we're, we're, we're gonna fix it up properly anyway let me just rip this piece off here this one this one's through properly Maybe it uh, fell off or came out. Maybe this came out somehow and the guy didn't really realize how they go. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, so if you, don't, if you don't bolt your speaker in nicely, you don't get an air seal around here. And if you notice, there, there, there's no foam, like there's no, there's, there's nothing here. I have to look back in the radio to see what's in the radio, but it looks like this speaker is lacking a seal. I just noticed another thing that just horrified me here. Let me just get this off. This one's through also. Did you see what's happening? Can, can you see what happened there? I just did it again. Okay, here's what I've noticed. Man, I've never seen this in a speaker before.
Is that true everywhere? The, I can, I can see my finger. Just give me just another couple inches in the camera here, please. I have my finger over here, just holding it. And when I push this, I can feel the whole cone move. This whole cone is not connected. Oh my gosh, really? It's not glued down or anything? There's a hole in it right here. Something going on right there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, with the whole cone loose, yeah, the whole thing is loose. Oh my gosh. Thing that would be holding it in space, in place rather, in space, yeah, it would simply be this, this piece here. It's hard to see on the camera. So that piece kind of grabs the cone down in this area and centers it. And you know what else? This looks like it's been lifted before. cone is fixed in place when you bolt this back into the radio cabinet. Now I've put the radio cabinet away. I can't even see in the back of it easily now. Wow, that raises lots of questions about this speaker. Never seen one like this. Never seen one in this condition here. Sounded pretty nice. Okay, let's flip it over. Now if I flip it over so you flip this speaker over and uh, this part of the cone is going to it's going to touch the bench this is not this this cone is not balanced i think it's drooped um, let's see if i can check that that's my yeah it's long enough So when I do this, I bring it into contact with the metal edges out here. Uh, this would represent like the top of my bench if the speaker's upside down. It's contacting here and here. Here, look, I've got a clearance in here now. Because this area is a little uh, ra raised. Well, we're going to have to really look at how the, uh, you know, hopefully the hole in the cabinet is big enough that this whole cone area is inside and not being pushed on. Looks like it, just from the dust. There's another, there's this another small break here. So these tiny holes uh, that you might have in a speaker, this like this one's probably big enough to do it. As the cone goes up and down, air will leak through this hole. And it'll, if, if the hole is kind of flappy, it'll buzz, you hear a buzzy sound. In a really, really bad case, if you have a big hole, too much air is leaking from behind to in front, and it won't push much air. Instead, the air will just leak, leak around it. So I won't, I won't go into uh, um, baffling and all that kind of stuff, but uh, the, the way you make a speaker work well is you keep the air from behind touching the air in front. Think about that for a little while. Yeah, now we're going to flip it over, but I don't want to flip it onto its... So, you know, is this the original speaker? Look, there, there's a repair on the back of it here. That's right on this one. So, so this has gone through some, well, okay, let's stop right there. So here's the output transformer. Here's some tape here. Why would that be there? These two wires that are taped go to here. And then there's 
two wires, one here, one here, coming out of this transformer heading down to the ay, 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 heading down to the voice coil leads. Okay, so this is a uh, electromagnetic speaker. Um, like there's a hum winding. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like there's three wires going into here, into the field coil. So maybe there's a hum winding in there or something. There's another one over here. It kind of got me exactly on how this is wired up. Unless unless these are the going into the voice coil. No, I don't think so. No, you can see the voice coil terminals here. So for sure that's... So I don't know exactly what's going on but the weird thing is there's an open wire here. Cut cut and open. So all this tells me this has been all been put together. This may have come from another radio. And they joined it here using tape. And they managed to solder up the rest of the connections. That's the story I get out of that. Um, I think this radio has been worked on a lot. I think that's what we can kind of conclude. Wow. Is there something I should do immediately to this speaker? I think I just avoid turning it upside down. So probably I should have some kind of protective cover on it so I don't drop a tool through it. So now I have to position this stuff in such a way that it's all connected together so I can play the radio. Yet, this is all garbage here. Number three. So I can play the radio and get access as much of it as possible to do the uh, to do all the testing and, and repair work. So I think uh, we'll start by putting the chassis here upside down. Quite a long speaker wire with lots of flexibility, so I can really, I could really get that speaker, you know, right up off my bench here somewhere. That's a good idea. I'll put it way up high, and I'll just yank on this core back, so I'll be down she'll come. I gotta remind myself, I still have this asbestos to clear off. I should, I should do it, but let's not do it right now. Let's stay focused on everything here. Now the antenna too, this is this is a real clumsy thing to have in my shop here. Again, its wires are half stiff and half flexible, so I can get away with something here. Um, do I really need to have this guy connected right now? You know, I, maybe not. Let's not connect it in there. Much of the time, I'd be feeding signals from instruments anyway. Okay, for the sake of just starting the radio up, I'm not going to position the speaker up high. Later, I'll find a much more secure place for it. Plug them in. Now, the hardest thing is the push buttons. The push buttons. Push buttons are the trickiest thing to position on a radio like this because you have the short cord. And you have three wires you have to stick in here. Maybe you don't need the three wires. Maybe it's time to take a look at a schematic here. Now, this is for a slightly different radio. Not much different. Okay, I got, oh, I got the schematic right over here. What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, the owner supplied me with all the documentation. So we will jump to the schematic. See on the antenna, I actually give you the colors. Green, black, blue. Good luck on seeing those colors. Alignments. 
here's the schematic. Here we are. Let's just take a look at this on the camera here. So here's the push button arrangement. The push button arrangement um, has the Switches. So there's there's the three wire connections. They're not really going to make it apparent here, are they? One, two. Where's number three? And then there's a little cable coming in here that goes to the phono side. So this must be the cable part. I think I can get away. I'm going to try this anyway. We're just plugging in this part. That would be that would be this part. We'll leave the three wires off because that. Boy, if that if the radio will work like that, I mean obviously the push buttons won't work, but the rest of the radio may well work. May not. That would be a lot easier than trying to like this push button thing is a real problem in a shop like this to get set up. I suppose I could extend some of the wires to the push button too and try that. So we look at the antenna. The loop assembly is showing a, a small loop here with a capacitor across it. And they're showing a loop with maybe four or five turns. And here's another variable capacitor. This is not variable, this is the variable one. So this is the one that you would tune right on the loop antenna. Here they're showing the connections blue, green, and black, A, B, and C. This is the connection out to the, if you put a, a extended wire on the back, you put it here. This comes into the internal loop. The internal loop is what's really connected to the, to the radio, the, the larger external loop. So conceivably, this loop is hidden inside that antenna where it has some dimensions. And all I'm seeing is this outside loop. So the outside loop has how many, how am I going to count the wires coming off the outside loop? Like, uh, wow, I don't know. I don't think I can do it from this. I mean, this isn't a picture, right? This is a schematic. Okay, we'll just leave the question open about the antenna until we need to worry about it. And uh, otherwise, uh, so we'll, we'll plug in the phono thing here. The phono thing. We'll plug in this. We'll see how it goes. Now, which side is which. So this is the antenna side, this is the audio side, this is where this is going to go. And because of stiff wires on that, I don't want to bend this too much. So I kind of want it to go in a little naturally here. Let's put it like that. Okay. So that's really tough to twist this. You know, it wants to sit, you know, in its normal place, which is up, up above here. That's where it wants to go. I can't let it go there. You can't go there. Again, just trying to avoid bending this wire too much. That's not so bad, actually. radio will work without so they still have the three other wires they're just hanging down here there's one hanging there um, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go it's all there's no there's no high voltage or anything traveling through any of this I'm pretty sure ah, all these switches yeah. we'll give it a try and see what happens the wires hanging open there uh, have a million volts on them. We'll, we'll know soon enough. Speaker, sort of buttons, no in, no antenna. Of course, that, that loop antenna is only there for AM. If I operate on short wave, that whole loop antenna thing can just be forgotten about. Can't it? Can't it? So with that in mind, uh, although I didn't really test this on shortwave, um, 
we can give it a try on AM like this if it's really sad. You, you think maybe I could hook up a, some kind of alternate antenna also. I might be able to figure that out just by touching these terminals. One of them is going to be uh, one of them will be excited when I touch it. Again, it's just a little hard to interpret because I have these uh, wafer switches in here. So it's just a little hard to quickly go through it. And I want to do it on camera here. Okay. Don't start muttering, Jim. So I think we're good to go. Let me plug her in. We're going to start with literally no antenna. Maybe we'll end up just feeding the signal generator. Oh, that's bent. Bring out my powerhouse tool here. <coughs> Better? The groaning part was very important in doing that. In you go. Now, let's see. Volume and on off. Tone. This, is, this isn't supposed to be loose here. So this is the piece that holds the uh, wheel that has all the writing on it. It's this wheel here. That, that's not supposed to turn. That's just fixed in place. See, the locking nut is loose and everything. Why, why would all that be? Somebody probably didn't realize it. They probably turned it and loosened this off without realizing it's not supposed to turn. This will have to be set very carefully because it controls the position of the little uh, little number labels. Okay, just adding up all the things that have to be done. Now, tuning the radio is a bit of a problem because it's dragging right on here. Why don't we, why don't we just lift that a little wee bit. And uh, probably just about anything will do it. Touch over here. You always wonder what these tools are for. Very heavy on this side. Wow. A lot of weight. Kind of, it's because of the transformer sitting here. So, a fair bit of weight right on that spot there. So this is what? Covered in oil? Where did all the oil come from? sure what happened there. So this is actually not even doing anything anymore. So just lifting it here. Okay. How many times are you going to say okay? Oh, I say that a lot. Dim lights. Switch on. Volume down. Ready to go. You can hear some heat expansion almost immediately in this. Kind of surprising in a way. All sounds great. Can't hear a thing. Okay, full power with the volume down. This radio is, is the speaker actually working? It's just so hum free, it's hard to believe. I stuck my ear in there, I don't know if you saw that, but there's a very low sort of sound in there, like a heartbeat. And what do we hear? Yeah, there's some sound coming out of there. Sure is quiet. Now it's either totally quiet because I have to hook those other three wires up. Or it's quiet because there's no antenna at all. I think those other three wires need to be connected. Band switch 
No, the band switch has a, a push button position on it, doesn't it? In this right here. Yeah, right. So we should be not on the push buttons, but on band A. So there's just no antenna. So I will be the antenna here. We'll see what we got. It's just a little awkward to get down there. Oh. Just have to get close to that coil. Turn it down a bit. I'd say it's that green wire there. Ooh, a diggity dog. Did did you hear the rattle come out of the speaker? I'm sure the whole the whole cone was lifting off the uh, rim. Talk, talking about an air leak, holy smoke. So let me get on there. That's no volume control? <laughs> huh? What? Jim, you're getting mixed up again. Tone control with the switch on it, volume over here. That's a little better. Okay, try this again. So I'd say that's the AM antenna. Connection. And wow, the radio's working. Okay, so we got it working. Ah, diggity dog. Um, why don't we check an AM band or two? Uh, now to do that, we have to connect to the legitimate antenna terminal. Where are you? Legitimate antenna terminals back here. So this is great news. I fixed quite a few radios of the same basic chassis. There's there's four or five of these different different manufacturers making basically the same radio. And uh, in each case, I have struggled to get those push buttons hooked up. Uh, the, cable and the three wires and now I've learned that you really don't need the three wires while you're doing a test like this so this will be an outdoor antenna uh, wow a little tough getting in there and make this easy oh yeah don't do that <laughs> okay let's use, let's use the finger extension technique here Hey, I started watching that series, Chernobyl. I've, I've paid attention to Cher Chernobyl since the day it happened. Um, since the day we found out it happened. Um, so I'm watching this uh, as a six-part, five-part series on it that everyone's talking about. I watched a, a documentary done by the BBC uh, maybe five, six, seven years ago. Uh, it's better. If you're interested in the details of what occurred, you know, the technical sort of details of what occurred, this BBC uh, version, version, BBC, it's basically the same story but told far more detail. What you know, anyway, and go on about it. There we go. Got an antenna on it. Don't know how good that antenna is. Can we pick anything up? We're still on AM. You hear that? That the, the sound becomes rattly. That's the paper cone just beating it against the uh, frame. Which end of the band am I on? This round. I'm on the high end. I want to be down here on the low end. Anybody down here?
not doing well on a regular antenna. So we're going to try the short wave now. So that's a push button setting. Push button, band A. Let's turn up a little bit. So that's, again, that's AM radio, no antenna. Band B. Band B, I don't know what it is offhand. But we're not going to pick anything up on band B. And then we got 31, 25, and 19. So 31, we're not likely to pick anything up either. 31. Whoop. We hear the cosmos. Or is that? Does that hiss the cosmos? Doesn't sound like it to me. And sounds so good on this band. So really, uh, really, I don't. What happened? Didn't I hook up the antenna? I never did. Okay, let's put it on there. Well, that didn't make any difference. Full, full tilt. Not happy on short wave. Okay, this way. So push button AM B thirty one. That sounds a little more like the radio. Thirty one meter band. That's uh, six megahertz, isn't it? So it's picking up stuff. It's not going to pick up any signals, I don't think. Good. Did I just go the wrong way with this control? Push button. AM. 31 meters. <laughs> 25 meters. We could pick something up here. Then again, maybe not. Seems more sensitive down here. Hey, hot diggity dog, what's going on there?
so easily confused here. I just I'm on my way to making endless mistakes on which band I'm on, so let's let's solve that. never be confused again. Push button. AM. Band B. 31 meters. And now I'm going to run. I'm going to make sure this antenna is switched on. It may not be switched on into my shop here. I don't know if that makes any difference at all. Nobody home here at all. Sometimes the band switch is the cause of that. I don't think so. Okay, and then the top band, this is the one that we can reasonably expect to hear something. 19 meters. Nothing. Well, nothing's not good enough. I hear something. Okay, so we're up, you know, uh, this would be around 15.1, somewhere like that. Let's go down around here. Ooh, what was that? What was that big sound? What was that big sound? I don't know what that was. 15, 15, 15, 15. We're connected. Let me put the ground on here. Should hear it. Should definitely hear it. I don't even need a radio to hear this. Clearly on the 19 meter band. Modulation is set to 30%. She's a no-go. Right, let's go back to one of the short wave bands that picks up what sounds like radio noise. Didn't one of them do that? Maybe since I have the uh, clip on here, it may have gone silent. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, let's go back and 
to the antenna. The antenna has signals everywhere. So So this is doing something. This is not. That's kind of curious, isn't it? Volume down. Band that makes noise. Sure. That's band B. Oh, okay, so I'm starting to remember a little bit here. Band B. Band B. Um, band B. I can't remember what frequency. Band B is. It must be written here somewhere. Band B is all the way from 2.7 to 9. Well, I got these all wrong. This is literally a general coverage receiver, the way this is working. It starts at 2.5, roughly 2.7 megahertz. Goes to 9, 9.9, .9, starts at 9.5, goes to 12.5, starts at 11. So this is actually full coverage, a full coverage radio. So we're on band B, in the middle, it's going to be something like 5 megahertz. We go somewhere in the middle. I'm sure this is going to work. Let's see. Right around 5. Moderate signal. Oh, come on. Hello. Okay, stronger signal. Holy smokes. This is a little hard to believe. This is just, oh yeah, hard to believe, all right. It's much better when you hook this up. You can certainly see the antenna effect of this. Down, down, volume. Band B. Band B wouldn't rely on the other antenna, would it? Why do they call it A and B and then they give it meter numbers after that? I fit on the sheet here. I'll show band B 49 meters. It actually covers a couple couple bands. Yeah, maybe that's why. Okay, so am I doing something wrong here that this is not producing? Well, It is producing. Just get it more juice. Super duper weak. 
4.2 pretty much in the middle of the band and the band goes from 2.7 to 9 yeah, 4 could be in the middle. That could be right. Okay, that's enough. I heard it. I heard it work. Is it enough? One more band up. So, so now, so we switch from the A and B and we're on to the 31, the meter bands. I have the feeling the antenna is not connected. I think we're going to leave it right at this point. I got enough here to get going. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Um, I'll fiddle around a little more in the next video, uh, establishing a reliable AM radio connection, a radio antenna connection. Before I start making changes, I'll probably use my own loop antenna. Although maybe we can fit the real McCoy in here, assuming the real McCoy is not actually in bad shape. It's actually electrically fine. A couple things to fiddle around with before we start going. Then it's just do some capacitors. This speaker is what's really going to require a fair bit of attention, I think. Okay. Wow, I've been here a long time. Time to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.